brought up by two loving parents, um, one brother, one sister, but felt a bit left out. Weren't part of the family as far as I was concerned and sort of got a bit rebellious because of that and all that sort of thing where I didn't want to go to school. So I'd just bunk off school and come down the pier for the day. At the time I was feeling low. I thought it would make me feel better. Next thing you know, I'm a heroin addict. Lying on England's south coast is the popular tourist resort of Bournemouth. In a recent survey, 82% of its population was more than happy with their lives there. But for 36-year-old Steve Molam, his growing up in Bournemouth was anything but happy. Following the birth of his younger twin brother and sister, Steve grew more and more alienated from those around him. My brother was very ill when he was young. Um, not any fault of his own um, and no fault of my parents, but all the attention then went on him and it was almost as I was left aside. When he was 10, he really started to go a little bit off the rails. He managed to steal some marbles from the shop and dragged me up to face the, the shop owner. <laughs> um, and then he went off the rails from that time. From this early brush with petty crime, Steve's life went into freefall. From the age of 14, Steve was in and out of children's homes, during which time he became more and more immersed in a life of crime and drug abuse. I got into quite a bad crowd um, from um, children's homes and um, just coming down to the pier in the, in the um, day, um, meeting up with other people that were on, living on the streets. And they'd offer me a drink and I'd have a drink and, and so on and things just got worse and worse. But over the course of the next few years, a series of events would transform his life. Marriage produced two children. And realising he was now responsible for someone other than himself, Steve got himself clean of drugs. And soon afterwards, he became involved in an organisation whose aim is to help people with similar problems to those Steve had faced as a youngster. I came across NACRO one day when um, my son was very keen in doing football. Um, and I was looking for a place where his cub team could um, practice. Um, somebody on the estate put me in touch with Dominic Weir, who is the football coordinator for NACRO. Steve came along to me and we said, yeah, come on board, no charge, it's a community site. And that was the beginning of the relationship. He was very keen to get me on board and, and to sort of help with a committee that they were setting up. So I, I got on board with the committee um, and I did some volunteer work through NACRO. NACRO is a UK-based organisation whose aim is to make local communities safer by finding practical solutions to reducing crime. With more than 200 projects across England and Wales, more than 60,000 young people have benefited from taking part in the sporting sessions NACRO organise. Football gives us an opportunity to work with these young people and to get them looking at their, their life skills. So obviously football brings in teamwork, communication, discipline, fitness, structure, encouraging each other. At school you will need these skills. When you go for employment you will need these skills. So it's about embedding the skills, the life skills really through, through football. Since becoming involved with NACRO, Steve's life has continued to thrive. He's rediscovered a focus in his life and the horrors he experienced whilst addicted to drugs have enabled him to support and help youngsters in a way that very few other people would be capable of. For me, people talk about inspirations and people talk about heroes and people talk about role models and people talk about professional footballers being the be all and end all and the ultimate icon. Steve is an inspiration to me every day when I work with him. I never envisaged that he would get this far, um, get on that well with people and, and I'm absolutely chuffed a bit that he's done it. <laughs> I'm not just that drug addict walking along the road anymore um, and that waste of space. Um, I'm there and I'm putting a purpose back into the area.